How's it going guys? My name is Alex and you're watching Modified 3D. Today we're going to finish up the direct drive install with some tuning and firmware work. This is part 3 of the Printer Mods Modular Direct Drive Install. So the first thing we're going to want to do is flash some brand new firmware on this. Now I'm going to be using the Easy Firmware Compiler on the TH3D Easy Firmware website. Uh, if you have a TH3D Easy board, this is available to you. If not, you're going to have to use the old way um, by manually editing Marlin firmware. And there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to do that. I'm going to focus on the TH3D Easy Firmware route. So let's go ahead load some new firmware onto this SD card and get going. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is pull up easyfirmware.th3dstudio.com and we're going to want to click the easy config option. This is going to be on the unified u2.r1 firmware and you are going to need a easy board for it. Uh, this is version 2.09a. So let's go ahead and click Easy Config. And we will select our printer, which is the Ender 3. We have a stock frame, but if you have the Ender Extender, you would pick that option there. And we do want to pick a custom printer name. We're just going to put Project Horizon. We'll hit Next Step. And that'll bring us to the bed leveling page where we can pick our easy ABL sensor. Obviously, if you had a BL touch, you would pick that, or if you're doing manual, you would use that. Uh, here, we're gonna pick the mount. This is gonna be for the offset on our easy ABL probe. Ours is a custom probe being the Hero Me Gen 5. This is where we're gonna wanna go into the directions for the Hero Me and find our firmware offsets for whatever mount we're using. I'm using the narrow. Uh, as you can see, it's having a bit of a hard time highlighting, but we're gonna wanna pick X negative 51 and Y negative five. So we'll go back into the easy config and enter that right into the offset spot. Next, we're gonna have options for easy ABL fast probe or super fast probing. I'm just going to let these be. If you have any issues, uh, you can do an M48 test to check your accuracy. You want it within 0 .0001. Um, and again, I'm going to keep all this as it is. Now, here's your easy ABL probe edge. That's going to be how far it measures from the outside. I've never changed this. However, I do change my points to 5 just to get a little bit more accuracy. And I will leave the heaters off during probing just because it takes a little bit longer um, and you're not going to want to use that unless you're directed by support. Now you can also option to click so slower probe moves which is just going to make your accuracy a little bit better and make it a little quieter as well as fine baby stepping which is going to be for our Z offset. I do activate the fine baby stepping. Now this is going to be for the filament sensor. We have our Easy Out V2 and ours is mounted, so we're gonna click that. We are running the TH3D hot end thermistor, so we'll change that. Um, if you have it stock, obviously leave that. Um, if you've changed anything on your bed thermistors, you can change that there. We're gonna wanna activate the direct drive printer option, obviously, uh, and what this is gonna do is decrease the unload length from 100 millimeters to 20. We're going to change our E steps just because the Bontag BMG requires 415. I'm going to leave Stealth Chop E off. Uh, that's just because of the low torque nature of the pancake motor. It's already low torque as it is. We don't want to decrease it more by using Stealth Chop. And we're going to activate Pancake Stepper because we are using a Pancake Stepper motor. Now, here's where you could reverse your E motor direction uh, if you haven't done that in the wiring for the Bontag. Um, I do want to activate slower homing in this option as well as home adjust. The home adjust is just going to be an alteration that we need to do for the Hero Me Gen 5 
we need to set that to negative 9 on the y, and that can be seen in the directions in step 12, I believe. Yep, step 12 right here. And what that's going to do is just compensate for the amount that the nozzle was moved because of the gantry. So it was moved forward, therefore we need to compensate negative 9. And our x hasn't changed, so we'll leave that the same. You can activate linear advance here if you want. I'm going to leave it off just because we want to do one tuning thing at a time. Once you get that, you're going to go ahead and enter a custom tag name or whatever so you can find it later on. And you will hit I am not a robot. Go ahead and click submit. And we will wait for our uh, firmware files to be finished. Once you have your firmware.bin folder, just simply bring it to your desktop and put it on your SD card. You can then eject your SD card and put it into your printer. Now that we got the new firmware loaded up, we can insert our SD card and turn on the printer. And it'll take a little bit longer than normal on boot up, and that's perfectly normal. It's just rewriting your firmware. Once that's done, we're going to want to make sure to go into our configuration settings and reset our EEPROM. So I'm going to do that really quickly and we can move on to the next step, which is going to be loading up a file into Cura or whatever slicer you're going to be using. And we got a couple changes to make in our slicer settings, mainly our print speed and retraction distance. I'm going to be dropping my retraction distance down from, I believe it was five and a half or six, down to hmm, probably between 0.5 and 1. And I'm going to be upping our print speed from 45 up to probably 50. So we'll go ahead and pull up Cura. And under our speed tab, we will make sure that our print speed is set to 50. That seems to be a good start point. Um, you don't want to go too fast. That can definitely cause some issues. And then we're also going to want to go down to the travel tab and change our retraction distance to 0.8. Um, that's what I found to be a good start as well. Once we have that done, we can go ahead and pick a model and load it up. I'm just going to find my calibration cube. This is just a 20 millimeter cube test for dimensional accuracy. We can slice it and save it to the SD card. Once we have that done, we can load it up and get to printing. Now that we got our file loaded up, we are finally ready to print. And let's just do a real quick recap on what all we had to do to get up to this point. First thing we had to do was remove the stock hot end and all that good stuff, the stock gantry, and replace it with the Printer Mods version 1.3 direct drive plate. We also used the Hero Me Generation 5 hot end system, and that was covered in part one of the install. In part two, we ran a brand new wiring harness with a 10 pin micro fit Molex connector on this end and JST XH connectors down on the board side. Once we got that ran, and we had to also rerun our wiring in front to prevent snagging. I had to remove a couple things because I had some clearance issues. The first thing I had to do was remove my red cover on my uh, X gantry motor because it was hitting the easy ABL mount and that caused it to not allow my micro switch to sense that it was home. Another problem was on the back of the gantry where the stepper motor mounts to, stepper motor mounts to, that part overhung too much and it clipped the side of this rail. That also caused some interference, making it so that I couldn't hit my X gantry end stop. So what I did was I just took some flush cuts and I snipped the back of that flush. Now I'll have to go back, re-edit my STL file, just like I had to do when I removed a little bit of height off the bottom of the extruder mount. Um, that seems to be the only thing that doesn't work on the Hero Me Gen 5. When printer mods changed from the version 1.2 plate to the version 1.3 plate, they changed a lot of the hole spacing and where it was at. So the creator of the Hero Me Gen 5 took about a month to update the back plate, and I think they just forgot to do this little tan bracket here that holds the Bontech and our stepper motor. 
because the part around the fitting, I had to take about four millimeters off. I'm gonna have to do the same, about four millimeters on the back. Anyways, some flush cuts fixed that. Once I got that all figured out, I went to home it again, and I found out that when I home it at bed level, the easy ABL mount hit my Raspberry Pi, which I had mounted up and down right here. So I just took that off, and I'll have to find a new spot to mount my Raspberry Pi later. But once I ensured that there was no clearance issues, I got to the point where this video started, where we <clears throat> updated our firmware and updated our slicer settings. Now we're ready to start our first print. So that's how to tune your slicer profile and firmware for direct drive. As you can see, it's not that hard at all. It's just a couple settings that we have to change. It took only a few minutes and we got this thing printing excellent. Uh, really happy with the results and hopefully it's going to be printing more reliably. Previously, I had a lot of issues with jamming from heat creep and it was also pulling the filament back up and I had no issues whatsoever on that last print. Everything went flawlessly. It turned out great. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more content on how to modify your 3D printer, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. My name is Alex, and this is Modified 3D.